poor more decks are more pleasant this Sunday, but pleasant signed a pioneering contract with an English club, and we even got to talk about the JFF election coming up this Sunday. But we've start one place and one place only at this match week 14 preview show, and that's looking back at Wednesday matches where I have you let me eat crow. Hey people, welcome back to Jump Hill Fun, and we have a big, big preview show where the preview shows are back and we have a big show today because a whole of news going on the entire week we'll some matches played and some big matches that come Sunday so we're going to get you all of that starting with our view who we we'll talk about in their last match uh, on Sunday where they took on Treasure Beach and came away in my opinion and lucky 2-0 win over there they, let, they basically made me eat crew in this one because you know, in fact, you, you have a fans should thank me because I'm not sure if them want them to see that video there and they said, say, yo, why are they going to up them game for this game? Because they take on Dumbo Hole in a very informed Dumbo Hole in yesterday. Everything I criticized them about in their match against Treasure Beach and for most of this season, they fairly rectified in this game. I said a team that is desperate to stay away from relegation should show a little more fight and impetus and they did just that in this game against Dumbo Hole in. Not only that, they also kept back to back clean sheet. A team that had one of the most poorest defense as of late was managed to keep out the, the free flow in Dumbo holding out of them goal. So, all impressive. Dumbo they control a lot of the game and possession like they expect them to do. But in this time, Harbour did not look scared and picked the right time when they should counter and do well to all a good organization at the back to snuff out most of Dumbo in chances. I was rather impressed out more fight seem in the players and this is more like a want from Harbour View to show that the threat of relegation is a real thing. It got even easier for Harbour View defence when Shaquille Bradford opened the score in the 14 minutes and from there they did well to starve off some attacks from, from Dumbo and forcing them to do wayward shots. The game even got it much better for Harbour View in the second half when they double up with Drew Anglin in the 83 minute to seal a rather impressive and a rather needed victory for Harbour View. While Dumbo Holding, who had a break from their last match last week, again it was one of those games where they played fairly decent football on the ground and just could not come away with anything in the goal scoring department. I'm not sure if Lenny High can be slightly worried about this because another game, you remind me of the Cavalier game, where they play again decent football but never carve out enough clear cut chances in my eyes. Anyway, let's look at the stats quickly. Yeah, man. So, in this stats, so our view was all shot again. Our view had eight total shots compared to Dumb Holding 14, while have you had two shots on target compared to Dumb Holding 3. So, yeah, Dumb Holding, as usual, played a fairly decent game. But I must give credit to how people credit is due this time. There's no luck this time. This time they had a clear plan, they stick to it and they executed perfectly. I have no qualms this time to say they were lucky and they surely shut me up based on my comments on them last week. But again, a per important win, propel them up to ninth. Can't complain about that. Why don't bother remain in the top six, but they got to get some goals coming soon. We're going to the, the day other match, the other makeup match, which was Home line with Owen Paper should be hosting Cavalier, but this game happened at Stadium East. And Home line who is on a new management, I question if there has been any real changes since the appointment of their new coach, coaching staff. Uh, show a little bit more fight in this game, but Cavalier, who is on an impeccable run of games, still managed to eke out and dominate a victory here. Cavalier, with all some of their top guns returning, like King and Atkinson once again showing class and i thought they were by far the better team but i think it credit to humble lion who put up some resistance Cavalier started as usual lately on the front foot and got a goal from their left back irving in the sixth minute and then got shanil thomas who is back in the goal scoring form a 2-0 lead in the 19th minute in the run against play humble lion who threw brian find a way to four defenders to get a, some cross slash shot off in the box and he, he find a way to hit a Cavalier player and hit the back of the net for own goal. It's saw life for Humble Lion who saw themselves you now feel a bit more confident to go at Cavalier and they saw the rest of the first half them on the front foot. It was a valid effort for Humble Lion and they would have hoped they would just get that goal 
in the first half and the whole things would change. However, they missed their chances and then Cavalier once again from the second half took control of the game and not much chances were made after that. So again, good win, another win again for Cavalier but credit to Home Lion who was the first team in five games to put a goal, although it's really our own goal, against Cavalier. The stats quickly. Alright, Ambulan had 7 total shots compared to Cavalier 10. Ambulan had 2 shots on target compared to 6 by Cavalier. Once again, showing their dominance. So yeah, really impressive um, display by Cavalier again who are, who are literally looking like a well-oiled machine at the moment. And look like them at the class of the league coming up to these round of fixtures. The Akits had another good game again, another assist. But Kin and Ming is, is make, looking like a solid partnership that look will propel them to the top of the table. So yeah, that was the wrap up of the outstanding matches. I know because of that, every team is on par in the league and the table, which sees uh, Cavalier now in the top three, but more players still leading. While Abu jump all the way up to ninth now. So no more fears of relegation, surely. Anyway, so that was what happened in the midweek as we have wrapped up match week eight. So, let me, so before I get to what's going to happen in match week 14, there are some news that was going around, some big important news for the league and for Jamaican football overall. A big landmark partnership has been struck between Mount Pleasant Academy and Charlton Athletic in England. This has been long in the workings. We saw the Charlton people in here at Droxall from early in the season. I would know that Mr. Gould and them were in dialogue to get this off the ground but it's a, a finally official yesterday. I gotta read a little bit snippet from their press release. Charlton Athletic are delighted to announce a partnership with the leading Jamaican football academy more pleasant with the long-term aim of further improving the quantity of elite players graduating from the club's esteem academy. So I'm gonna jump to the end quickly because you know without much time. As part of the various commitments underpinning the partnership, Charlton's young players will take part in annual youth tournament on more pleasant campus while the addicts will host more pleasant senior side in an annual preseason charity match at the valley. Wow, this is huge for multiple ways. First of all, it's a landmark thing for youth football here in Jamaica. You see, how have you brought the mold with Baby Ghana many years ago? And then Cavaliers did an excellent job, I feel, in how they developed their youth teams and youth system. But what more Pleasant has been doing these last couple of years with a fully fledged academy, I know this partnership to have a, a fully functional pipeline from Jamaica straight to England is unprecedented. And major credit should be given to the Gould family and everybody involved. This works on multiple occasions because now it gives you it gives our young players a real realized dream that they can somehow find their way into Europe while it also helps with the development and, ex and garnering experience for the young players. I even love that last snippet at the end where it says that more players and senior players will take on Charlton in preseason matches in England because that would also give a lot of our local players here in the Premier League some exposure. A lot of them will get a chance to be in the shop window a bit better or even get the experience to play in England which is not a bad thing. Can't argue about that. It also build the branding of not only more pleasant, not only JPL but Jamaican football in a whole. So major kudos again to all involved and why I want to see more of it coming. Speaking of more of it, it's not quite at the level, but Montego Bay United have also announced yesterday the full launch of their youth academy. It's not at the level of, of more pleasant yet, but it's another step in the right direction for youth football in Jamaica. Montego Bay will now have a fully year-round youth program that see the youth teams training and, and having camps from four days a week all throughout the year as they believe it is not enough to play football for you know, a couple of months as football is a, a, is a all year round thing and that's seasonal and I agree it's a major boost for Montego Bay and in the community of Montego Bay as we can see you now some youngsters hopefully funnel 
from these youth camps and youth academy straight into the senior team and move further from that. So big move again in the academy front and I hope every team eventually start up something just as good as this. So we're moving on now to the much anticipated JFFF election that is scheduled to happen at Resi High School this Sunday if no court injunction uh, not take place which we don't know how I go with that yet. But as it stands, the election is supposed to go Sunday between Raymond Anderson and Michael Ricketts for the, the head of the Jamaica Football Federation. Alright people, this battle has been going on for a while and we largely stay out of it, right? As we more really focus on the, what's going on for the league. But with the election coming so close and the final manifesto draft, we have got to look into it, what these two candidates mean for the future of the league. All right, and honestly, based after the two manifestos or what we can get, them not really highlight specifically what them can do for the league. But the best we got is what them going to look at in terms of youth development. Right, well, both parties said not only they're going to put money, but they're going to restructure how youth football is done in the country. If you've been following my fellow Jamaican football YouTubers, there's been a lot of debate stirred up by the under 20 coach. John Wall lately about how Manning Cup and the Costa Cup cannot prepare Jamaican youths for proper Korean football. And it's no surprise that this hot topic is going to be highlighted by both parties in the manifesto. But what does that say for the Jamaica Premier League? Does not currently seem to be home to a, a plethora of young, good, fresh faced football players. Well, I don't have a dog in this fight, but both teams seem to have issues on their own. But while it's good to hear more money is coming to youth football, I want to know more, a direct influence of more academies in the country. As you can see by more pleasant and all their worthy investments seem to be paying off. As with the new deal with Charlton, you would love to see at least 10 more of these full-fledged academies popping up throughout the league. But like Sir Cavalier, we've been doing a good job with youth development over the years. How great would it be to hear they have a fully fledged academy? Of course, most of these are private ventures clubs, but it'd be good to hear if the league and the federation were doing all their best to support such an initiative. One thing can lead to this going forward is the return of the league's under 21 competition. If you remember some years ago, Every Premier League team used to have to have an under 21 team and those matches used to be played before the big men then play on a Sunday afternoon. Of course it was disappointed because of lack of funding but I would love to see one of them ensure that this social league, I don't want to put it under 21 either, I would say under 19, put this back initiative back in place as we need our youth playing football and structured league football a lot more regularly than just the two, three months they play in school board. So that will be one of the things I want to see going on, how they facilitate and structure the league going forward, do away with the idea of expanding past 14 leagues. As you can see with Lime Hall, they're struggling significantly and you have to think if there's enough quality around to push up the league from 14 to 16 like was previously talked about. Also, I want to see reconstructing and more streamlined of tier 2 where all the Paris leagues are more structured and teams are prepared and properly ready for the step up into Premier League. Not easy of course, but that's the vision I'm hoping that comes out of this election this Sunday. I don't have no clue who's going to win and I don't really care who win, but I need either Victor to put some more emphasis on our local football and our local youth development. So that's all I have to say on this election. May the best man, may the best man and team win. I will see how it go come Monday. I think, or the, I think the fight results will be Sunday. Either Sunday or Monday. Anyway, let's get back into the business at hand. And match week 14. Everyone is back playing. All the teams are back. And it starts out with a big match, probably the biggest match of the year potentially. Poor Moore will be hosting more pleasant at Fernita Park. Poor Moore who has been immense lately 
who don't necessarily play pretty football but play effective football are getting the job done and getting results taking a more place inside who shot out the blocks and been pinned back a bit but still have a quality squad to trounce anybody but the difference here is that Portmore is a team with the meanest defense if I remember correctly they are only conceded 8 goals all season so this is a moat watering clash they meet at the start of the season if you remember correctly where more players are run over 1-0 victors in that game Portmore wasn't fully revving on all the engines just yet so now here when both teams are a bit on form is a much watched TV so again Portmore will host more pleasant 3 p.m. on Sunday let's move on to the other game Cavalier also on form we take on and I can't believe I'm going to say this back to back winners Arborview so this is another interesting game and another big test for Arborview who after winning back to back find himself with probably one of the toughest assignments to take on a red hot Cavalier Cavalier of course as I said with all their players now back in form and healthy looking like the class of the league and their defense is also looking mean but have you as Bradford and with Bradford you, they have hope so it will be interesting to see how they take them on and if they can eke out a point here it will be another good result for them I believe so again that's Cavalier versus Harborview this Sunday Montego Bay United who also had an excellent result last time out will be hosting Lime Hall Montego Bay will be back at Westport Park where they have been at their best while Lime Hall has been poor anywhere them go even at home this should be an easy win for Montego Bay United but in this league you never know but the form there and, and how Lime Hall has looked so helpless in front of goal it should be a foregone conclusion that Montego Bay take away all 3 points here so again that's Montego Bay hosting Lime Hall this Sunday now the other new boy is Shredder Beach who I felt played decent against Harborview and came away unlucky will be hosting Umber Lion a big game this for both teams I feel I feel Umber Lion and their coaching staff need to try probably get a run of games now where they're showing that this was a right choice to put them at the helm and it starts here with the relegation fighter Treasure Beach who themselves have a major issue playing decent enough being competitive enough but they're lacking quality especially with scoring goals they have not scored in six to seven games on the trot and they are again they're at home and they have to look at Homer Lion as a game they can win Homer Lion though will be feeling fairly fine and confident going into this one and surely they will think and say hey this is a game that we can win on the road so again Chester Beach host Humble Lion 3 o'clock Sunday Waterhouse the most inconsistent team I can say in this league will be hosting Tivoli on Sunday Waterhouse now have strung some decent performances lately especially a win over have you the last time out we take on Tivoli who were shocked in their last game in their defeat Tivoli still have a potent firepower up front especially with Justin Dunn leading the way will look to be back on winning ways as they face Waterhouse again this is another good clash between these teams I hope I just hope as a neutral Waterhouse put off another good consistent 90 minutes so that way they will give Tivoli a good fight so again that Sunday Waterhouse takes on Tivoli the Monday night was Vera Mullines will meet in the reverse game here. Vera, they will host Mullines. Vera, another team has been inconsistent up and down. One win here, they lose the next game. But they surely look at Mon uh, Mullines as a, a chance. While Mullines would like to seek revenge and to look at this game as another chance to propel himself away from relegation battle. So again, that is Vera hosting Mullines. The final game they will see a, a good Dumbolin team will take on a good on it team to run out the round. Dumbolin again playing some very decent on the eye football while on it is a team who will only play when they're up for it honestly. You never know on the day if on it will be up for the game and you, what you can expect. They have all the talent to play some of the best football in the league but there are times where it seems that they're just going through the motions are not putting in the hardest of work to really make a result come true. I was very disappointed in the last game against Cavalier, but I expect them to bounce back here in this game as they know that Dumbolin is a decent team and they can rest on their laurels. So again, that's Dumbolin 
taking on Arnett Monday. Yeah, people, a lot of big matches coming this weekend. Well, I'm telling you straight that poor more, more present game is a game when the team can't miss me. I have to go see how that game is going. We might even go for Anita Park for watches. So, yeah, tell me in the comments which game you are looking forward to. Yeah, we'll be back here on Tuesday to give a comprehensive review of round 14. But until then, keep it locked right here for all things Jamaica Premier League at Jampiel Fun. Big up again, YouTube.